everybody, it's Dr. Jamie, Dr. Fit and Fabulous. Welcome back. We're gonna be talking about weight loss. The million dollar question that everybody has and something that I personally struggled with most of my life. So what do you have to do to lose weight? I've heard that you just have to eat less and move more. And that's certainly the message that we've been giving as medical providers to our patients for years and years. Do you just have to create a calorie deficit? I've tried it many times and it's really hard. You feel like you're starving yourself and you're just like white knuckling through it. Over the past couple of years, I have adopted a low carb and ketogenic lifestyle, and it has been one of the most sustainable ways to weight loss that I have ever attempted. But I wanna talk about the problem that we have in America. The problem that we have in America is there is a growing number of people who are overweight, obese, or have super morbid obesity. And it's not only growing amongst adults, but it's growing against, amongst adolescents and children as well. America is eating on average more than 350 calories per day than we were 20 years ago, and only 80% of us are exercising at the rates that are recommended. There are five metabolic markers that I think you should know inside your body. What is your blood glucose, your fasting blood glucose and fasting insulin level? What is your triglycerides? What are your HDL cholesterol? What is your blood pressure and what is your waist circumference? These five parameters are great markers of metabolic health inside the body. In a meta-analysis done just a couple of years ago, these five markers, 88% of America had at least one of these that was abnormal. That means only 12% of America is metabolically healthy. When we talk about weight loss, our real goal should be metabolic health, not necessarily a number on the scale. Is it true that you can carry excess weight and still be metabolically healthy? Yes, there's always outliers, but when you look at statistics on people that are overweight or obese, only about 1% of them are actually metabolically healthy. We also are cut from different cookie cutters. We have different genes, different genetic susceptibilities. There's something called the FTO gene, which is related to your propensity to develop obesity in your lifetime. It changes the way that you perceive hunger and perceive satiety when you eat food. There's really three mechanisms inside of our body that tell us when to eat and when to stop eating. And it all starts inside our brain in the hypothalamus. And then as we move down the digestive tract, it goes down to our stomach. So when you eat foods that are full of volume, think of like a big leafy green salad or a soup that is high in volume. Anytime you stretch out the stomach, your body perceives that it has some nutrition in there and it perceives that it's full. Then you have a couple different hormones, one called ghrelin that tells you when you're hungry and one called leptin that tells you when you're full. We need all of these things to work together to tell us when to eat and when to stop eating. This FTO gene and other genetic susceptibilities that you might carry might throw these things out of balance. Or you might have such poor metabolic health that you've developed leptin resistance. Literally, your brain never tells you that you're full. There's been some studies on different approaches to losing weight. Should you eat low fat? Should you eat ketogenic? Should you eat the Twinkie diet? I always say there's like a hundred ways to skin a cat and there certainly are many ways that you can lose weight. But is one superior to another? Well, I say whatever works, works. And to be your own expert, try lots of different things. But I'll, let me just tell you why the ketogenic diet works for so many patients and why it's worked so well for me. To know if the ketogenic diet is right for you, you may want to know if you're actually insulin, insulin sensitive or insulin resistant. You can find this out by getting your fasting glucose and fasting insulin checked. I prefer patients to have fasting insulin levels less than five. You can also calculate a variety of insulin resistance indexes that can be helpful too in determining your insulin sensitivity. Our bodies have two fuel sources, glucose and fat. Then we have protein. I think of protein as the building blocks and carbs and fat as the energy source. We cannot eat carbs and fat together. We cannot overeat energy or that causes us to gain excess amounts of body fat. So what, are the, what is the advantage of a low carb or ketogenic diet? Well, a couple of researchers have looked at this. Young, back in 1971, took a group of adolescent males and they were untrained and overweight. He split them up into three categories, all of them eating 115 grams of protein, and then three different groups, one eating 100 carbs, one eating 60 carbs, and one eating 30 carbs. The rest of the calories were all equal amongst the groups, and those, of course, came from fat. 
Amongst the groups, the lower the amount of carbohydrates that these young men ate, the more that they produced ketones and the more they lost body fat. So to argue that just calories in and calories out is the only thing that matters is probably not the whole picture. There are so many other variables at play. For people in this country that are insulin resistant, utilizing fat and carbs to their advantage is probably the most important thing. By keeping carbs super low and keeping fat at a moderate level, they're forcing their body to utilize their body fat as fuel. One of the biggest misconceptions with the ketogenic diet is that you can't do it long term. And as soon as you go back to eating the way that you used to eat, you'll just gain the weight right back. Well, of course this is true. You can't expect your body to be different if you don't do something different. Studies have been done on the long-term effects of the ketogenic diet and have been shown that patients can maintain this lifestyle for many years. I personally have been doing it myself for over three plus years, and I have many patients that have been doing it much longer. If you've seen success with the ketogenic diet or low carb approach, why don't you comment below and tell us your experience? Of course, if you have questions, you can always ask them below too. Make sure you like this video, hit subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you can see our future content.